Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We're going to be solving for x values. We're going to look at the solutions and then I'll show you a graph. Let's get started. So first of all, notice that this equation is not very hard to solve at first glance because we have bases that can be written as powers of one another, such as 4 and 2. So hopefully you notice that 4 is 2 squared. And that's what we're going to start with. So let's go ahead and replace the 4 with 2 to the second power. And then raise it to the power 2 to the power x. Another power of 2, by the way. And that equals 2 to the power negative x. Great. So let's go ahead and use the power of a power property. So in this case, we are supposed to multiply the exponents. So we're going to go ahead and multiply these. And write this as 2 to the power 2 times 2 to the power x equals 2 to the power negative x. And then this uh, 2 is considered 2 to the first power. To multiply two powers, we have to add the exponents because, the, because they have the same base. So we can write this as 2 to the power 2 to the power x plus 1 equals 2 to the power negative x. Even though the left hand side looks somewhat complicated, don't worry because we have the same base. So we can totally focus on the exponents. Since we have the same base here, we can safely say that the exponents are equal, right? And since the bases are not 1 or negative 1, uh, we're not going to worry about that. So we can from here write that 2 to the power x plus 1 equals negative x. How do you solve this equation? Well, you could guess and check. Definitely, that's a method, even though it doesn't always work and it's not always the best method, but it's still a method, uh, especially if the answer is an integer, right? Or it's a fraction like a rational number. But you also have to find all the solutions. So how do we do that? How do we go about solving, um, finding all the solutions? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find a solution by guess and check. And then uh, we'll prove that there are no other solutions. And then I'll show you the graph. And there's also an alternative approach for this problem. Uh, I can also talk about that briefly. It's not going to make a huge difference, but at least it just shows you another way to approach it. Anyways. So here's what I noticed, um, and actually that's how I kind of made up the problem. Uh, anyways, um, you know, uh, in another video I'll talk about how I made up that particular problem. So that's my plan. Anyways, so here uh, x equals negative 1 works because on the left hand side it gives me 2 to the power 0, which is 1. And on the right hand side, uh, negative, negative 1 gives me 1 as well. So x equals negative 1 works. That is a solution. But how do we go about proving that there are no other solutions? Let's go ahead and talk about that. At least we found one solution, right? Okay. So now, here's what we're going to look at. f of x equals 2 to the power x plus 1 is an increasing function. That's my claim. And it's easier to prove by using derivatives, but you should hopefully know that this is an exponential with a base greater than 1, so these functions are always increasing. What about the other one? Let's call that g of x. If g of x is negative x, as you know, negative x has a negative slope, therefore this is always a decreasing function. And what is that supposed to mean in terms of intersection points? You have a decreasing function, and the, the shape doesn't matter much here, curve, linear, whatever. If you have an increasing function and a decreasing function, they're only going to intersect at a single point. And that's the point we found. So x equals negative 1 seems to be the only solution to this equation. Let's go ahead and uh, look at this from a slightly different perspective, even though that's not much of a difference. I just noticed, by the way, while talking about the first method, I haven't thought about this before. Anyways, uh, I noticed 2 to the power x and 2 to the power negative x are reciprocals. So if you go ahead and call this y, we get 4 to the power y equals negative y. Not a huge difference like I said earlier. We're still looking at an exponential function and a decreasing linear function. So they're going to intersect at a single point. But at this point, you know, I don't know, it might be a little easier to see the solution. I don't know, maybe it's harder. So since we said that x is equal to negative 1, we're y is supposed to be 1 half. But does that actually work here? Actually, oops, no, I'm not, I was not supposed to write 1 over y. Okay, there you go. Okay, absolutely, yeah. So uh, does y equals 1 half work? And yes, it does because 4 to the power 1 half equals 1 over 1 half because they're both equal to 2. Great, so that works. 
And also, another thing that's really nice is you can go ahead and write this as y times 4 to the y equals 1, and then use uh, the, what is that called? Um, Lambert's W function, yes, I, I, I made a video, but I still can't remember that name. But anyways, um, yes, you can use that uh, function to solve it that way too. Anyways, let me go ahead and show you the graph and we'll finish up. So the graph of these two functions, y equals 4 to the power 2 to the power x and 2 to the power negative x. By the way, I'm not looking at the um, 2 to the x plus 1 and negative x here. I'm looking at two different functions, but it's, uh, it doesn't matter. This is still increasing and this is still decreasing and they intersect at negative 1, 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.